Hey everybody, it's Dr. Bam. Um, I wanted to go over the unit that we'll be opening right now. It's going to be grayed out because it's still closed. And that is Unit 5, Building Relationships and Guiding Behaviors. Um, also in this unit, we look at supporting communication with families and colleagues. So making sure we understand working with both our families and our colleagues, our co-workers. Um, communication is a key portion of working with infants and toddlers and working with um, the families that we have and how we share information with the co-workers that we have back and forth. So uh, it really plays into all aspects of what we do for caregiving. So remember, it's not just what we do with the child, but the fellow care uh, parents and fellow caregivers, so we kind of just covered that. Um, I'm kind of looking at the Knowledge Foundation area here. To ensure effective communications, we need to work on active listening skills. We need to learn how to express our own needs and frustrations and support the needs and frustrations of the children that we work with. And we need to provide feedback when it's appropriate to whoever it may be appropriate to give to. Um, we also look at building relationships um, with our infants and toddlers as they learn to guide their own behavior and we support this guidance. Um, so with that being said, this week you are going to first start with this Knowledge Foundation video, which you should be doing if you're hearing this. Number two, I have included the PowerPoints for chapter six and seven here. As always, I'm going to encourage you to print them and use them to guide your reading of the textbook chapters, or at least use them as a summary of the chapters when you are working through assignments. Finally, you're going to complete your knowledge your Unit 5 Knowledge Builder and your Unit 5 application Knowledge Application Assignments. Um, there is no lab assignment this week. That will be the second lab assignment will be introduced next week and completed in Unit 7. Um, and that will wrap up the lab assignments for this course. So you have a break, a week break for your lab assignments. Um, so in the Knowledge Builder this week, we start by looking at um, three steps to communicating with parents. This is a, um, an article I took off of the website that is listed at the top. It was having trouble embedding, and so I went ahead and kind of copied and pasted it in here. But if you go there, it's exactly the same article. And it really works on some of these things like using the I statements, asking for the parent's perspective so we really get that um, home to school picture and uh, most important looking at how can we compromise how can we look for to support we can't do everything that a parent might want but there may be some ways that we can support a parent in um, a behavior or a, an issue that they might want solved at the program um, finally we we are going to check in and follow up with anything that's been decided so after reviewing that article, um, you're going to discuss in a paragraph or more two ideas or connections that you made with how you will work to communicate with parents of an infant or a toddler. Then we have a brief video on an infant model classroom. And um, I want you to really think about in the video two ways or ideas that this program implements good communication practices from home to school and school to home. So how are they working to support the uh, continuous care of the infants and toddlers in their program? Next is a, a video on teamwork, because we've discussed that working with our colleagues is a very important additional way of communicating and a need to support the infants and toddlers because they pick up on the stress, they pick up on the lack of communication, and things could just get missed. Um, so if you know one person worked in the morning and one person worked in the afternoon, the parent needs to know what occurred both in morning and afternoon with their child. So after watching this video, think of two ways that you and a coworker in an early childhood program might struggle with one another. So what problems might arise in working with someone in an infant or toddler classroom? Then based upon the ideas in the video and other resources in this unit, think about how could you support resolving that issue you thought about um, that you and your coworker might have. So what are ways that you could work together to resolve the issue that might occur? Sometimes it's helpful if you've worked in an early childhood program to think about some issues that arose while you were there, maybe not necessarily with you and a coworker, but between other coworkers. Okay, then in the fourth 
in the biggest one, and this is the long, lengthiest video, you're going to answer the following seven questions. Um, just take your time going over each of the questions. Uh, all the answers are found within the video. So you might want to copy the questions while you watch the video, um, have a place to jot them down, anything that would work to help you facilitate that. It should be set correctly this time. I know um, a couple units back it was set so that you could not reopen it. Um, that was an error. So it is set so it can be saved and reopened. I also did set to, um, you'll see here I set to attempts in case you have a technology issue. I only grade the latest attempt though. Okay, going back to our unit. The last thing that you will be doing this week is the application assignment for unit six. And this is going to look at guiding some behaviors in the classroom. Each of these scenarios is 25 points and you will answer each of these four sections for each scenario. First, you'll look at the um, specifics the look at the scenario. So scenario one and then scenario two. And for each of them, what about the child's behavior needs a response from the adult? So think that there may be more than one child in the scenario. So each child may need a response from the adult. So what about the child or children's behavior that's occurring needs a response from the adult? Number two, list what the possible causes of that behavior might be. And then C, I should have said B because it says B, list the possible. C, discuss appropriate responses that you as the caregiver could make to the child's behavior. And then finally, D, give the potential responses of the children to your reactions. And for example, do you think it's going to take out the behavior? What, could it possibly come back? Um, what do you anticipate that the child would do resulting from what you suggested? So first we have Stephen and Peter that are um, hanging out here, and then Dolores down here. Um, and remember, there's other kids in Dolores' example, and, and there's two kids in Stephen and Peter's example. So have a great unit, and um, I look forward to reading your responses.